Welcome back. Okay, we're talking about dynamic mode decomposition, which is a powerful data-driven method to extract spatial temporal coherent structures from high-dimensional data and give you a linear model for how those evolve in time. Okay, we recently wrote a book on this, Dynamic Mode Decomposition. It's, uh, we have a website, dmdbook.com. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to download the code and data, and I'm going to walk you through how easy it is to actually get started with DMD. Okay, so go to dmdbook.com, download the code and the data, and unzip them into the same folder. Okay, so now here we are in my downloads. I have this data folder, and in data there is another data folder, and all of these code, uh, like every chapter of the book, the code for that chapter is in uh, one of these folders. So I'm going to go into my fluids chapter. And now you can see all of these codes uh, to compute DMD on a fluid. So I'm actually going to compute DMD on that flow past a cylinder data, the fluid flow past a cylinder. Uh, so I have all of these codes. Um, some of them load the data. Some of them plot the data. Some compute the singular value decomposition or the POD. And I'm going to start this one, which is compute DMD. So you can fire this up on your own. I've already uh, loaded my data, so I hope you can read this. It's um, cylinder all dot mat, so that's all of the data for the flow past a cylinder, uh, and it's such, such essentially full vorticity fields, and each column is a vorticity field in time. So as the columns evolve, time is evolving. So the first thing I do is I take my big data and I stack it into my x and x prime matrices. Okay, so the first m minus one columns go into x the second to m columns go into x prime. Okay, so that's the first step. I take my data and I stack it into um, x and x prime. Then what I do is I compute a singular value decomposition of x to find the dominant coherent structures, my POD modes, my proper orthogonal decomposition modes of my data matrix x. And notice I'm using an economy SVD or else this would be super expensive. Okay, so u has my dominant coherent structures. Okay, now if I do that, I could probably plot semi-log y, the diagonal elements of s. This is always a good idea, is to actually plot what your singular values look like. Uh, maybe I'll plot it a little bit thicker. Uh, line width 2. And so what you can see, this is on a log scale. These are my singular values evolving in, uh, sorry, uh, my, my singular values. This is the first singular value, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and so on and so forth. So this is uh, index, and this is the log of the singular value in the sigma matrix. You can see that there's a dominant singular value here. That essentially corresponds to the mean flow because I didn't subtract out the mean flow. And then after that first singular value, they essentially come in these mode pairs because the, so if you, if you are familiar with this fluid flow past a cylinder, you know that there are, is this kind of periodic vortex shedding motion that's given by these higher harmonic uh, sine and cosine mode pairs. Okay, so that's what these look like in the singular value decomposition. What I can do based on the singular value decomposition is I can pick where to truncate uh, how many of these modes to keep and how many to throw away. So in this case, I think I'm choosing to keep 21 modes and I'm going to throw away the rest. So here I set the desired rank of my DMD approximation to be 21. This is one of the knobs you get to tune in DMD is you get to pick how many modes you have, how many DMD modes, how many POD modes you're basing this off of. So I'm going to try 21 modes. Um, so it's basically that dominant mean flow and then 10 harmonic pairs of eigenvalues. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the first 21 columns of u, the first 21 by 21 subblock of sigma, and the first 21 columns of v. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm pulling out the first r columns of u, the first r by r block of sigma, and the first r columns of v. And then all I do, so the DMD procedure is very simple after that. I build my little reduced A tilde, and that's the best fit linear model that tells me how these 21 POD modes are evolving in time. Okay, so this 21 by 21 linear model tells me how these, these mode coefficients evolve in time. And it's easy to compute here, so this is just based on the data I have. Uh, I pseudo inverse to compute the big A, and I project it onto these 21 modes to get a 21 by 21 matrix. Then I compute the eigen decomposition of A tilde, so I get the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. 
And then the last, the final step is reconstructing from these small 21 dimensional eigenvectors, reconstructing my big high dimensional full state DMD eigenvectors in phi. So you can see that the actual DMD procedure is just a few lines of code. I'm going to run this. Okay. And now I actually have all of those, all of those structures. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to plot the actual DMD modes. The first, um, I guess I'm going to plot these DMD modes uh, using this plot cylinder command, which you can download and read about. OK, so let's try that. And it's going to run this pretty fast, I think. OK, so it ran all of them. And these are essentially the different DMD mode pairs. OK, so that's a DMD mode pair that oscillates at a coherent uh, frequency. Here's another one down here. Uh, and you can see that they're getting broader and broader. That's a mode pair. Here's another one. I'm basically just plotting all of the DMD pairs uh, that, I've, that I've cooked up. Okay? So these are the actual DMD modes that came out of that analysis. Okay? In this case, they happen to look a lot like POD modes because the system is, is a, a very normal system. Okay? And that's, that's a detail that we'll talk about later. But, but what I really want to get out here is you can, first of all, download all the code and data. So you have this. It's on that website. Just download it. Running the DMD only takes a few lines of code. So we, you know, it's just these lines right here. We did a singular value decomposition. We pull out the dominant coherent structures. And then we do the best fit regression in A tilde. We do the eigen decomposition. And we reconstruct the modes, kind of these three lines here. And then it's easy to reshape these columns, these modes, back into flow fields and see what the coherent structures are that are oscillating at a fixed frequency and time. So the last thing that I want to do is sometimes I want to plot the DMD spectrum. So here I'm going to basically plot a unit circle because this is a discrete time model. And then I'm going to plot the real and diagonal parts of those DMD eigenvalues. Sorry, the real and the imaginary parts of those DMD eigenvalues. And this is what it looks like here. So not only did I get those coherent structures, those dominant DMD modes, but I also figure out what are the eigenvalues, what are the time dynamics corresponding to each of those modes. And since this is coming in complex conjugate pairs, that explains why I had those kind of complex cosine and sine spatial mode pairs that are going to be, um, they're going to be oscillating out of phase with each other. OK? So you can uh, do this yourself. You can download this code. In fact, in the DMD book code, there's actually a DMD function. So you don't even have to write any of this. Uh, you can just plug your data x into the DMD function, choose the order r, and it'll do all of this for you. But I encourage you, try to take your data and actually plug in your data into this and start doing the DMD and plotting the eigenvalues. Look at the singular values, um, you know, things like that. OK, thank you.